So our next speaker is Aran Nisei, and he's going to present Framer. <laughs> Thanks. So this is work that's been going on at Teesside uh, with uh, Jonathan, Jai, Thomas, uh, Julie and Peter. Um, and uh, Jonathan's now gone to CADA. Um, so it's in the world of domain model acquisition. So there's a, a, some kind of model, some kind of world in the, uh, some part of the world, sorry, that we want to uh, examine, we make some observations of it, uh, create a model, hopefully, and then hopefully that will tell us something about uh, the actual, what happens in the actual world. Um, and uh, yeah, as we've, as we've heard, I guess, this week, uh, we should maybe consider sometimes not considering um, things in the world that are actually planning models already that we then forget about a little bit when we come down here. And, um, uh, but this work is, is going to keep with that and, and move hopefully a little bit away from this um, fixed kind of computer friendly syntax to something slightly more natural. So, um, the question is, can we take natural language action descriptions and still create a model, I guess? Um, and uh, we're not looking at, at, at traces of, 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 action, of, uh, of just natural language, it's specifically action descriptions. So, it's fairly... Um, uh, sentences that have, have, have had some guidance, I guess, in creating. They're not, not, they're not free sentences, but there's some kind of structure. Um, so, for example, um, some businesses keep logs and, and they have some kind of guidelines um, as to how those sentences should be created. Um, medical patient uh, traces sometimes, um, and also potentially just output logs from certain things. But the important thing is that this sentence is more understandable than that one for someone that doesn't understand planning. And, and you don't need to you know, remember which order you had to, the, the which argument in, for example. Okay, so the approach is to run straight to Lockham as soon as possible. So in, in other uh, natural language um, approaches, what's quite often happened is that um, you start off with quite a lot of natural language processing, you try and build causality and relationships on the natural language side and then come across to a planning model. Here we're going to take a direct approach and exploit what's already happened in planning um, to um, first get to action headers and then use domain model acquisition in order to create the model. And um, first we're going to extract actions and objects and then we're going to cluster them into operator sets so um, trying to find out um, a kind of behavioural similarity between different sentences and then um, once we've got a group of those create a single action header for that entire group. So the uh, natural language processing, so it's, it's based on Stanford Quarter NLP, so it's a synta syntactic um, an annotator and uh, what you get is the phrase structures out of that, so um, for example this sentence up here gets um, parsed and we get the parts of speech and also this kind of structure. And so for example, um, you know, it's a red truck is um, the noun is a uh, truck, and it's got a modifier of, of red. And we also extract the, uh, the verb, the action. And then we use some crawling rules to go through this structure and, act, uh, and create a, a, a reduced form, an action template, um, which is a nice kind of concise representation that, that gives us roles. So for example, object from and to are the roles of this action and the actual verb, the action that's happening, and then um, the objects that fill those roles as well. And from, from this kind of structure, I guess I'll show you some more. 
you can imagine now, uh, you know, that we're one step closer to, you know, we've got the objects, so we know what, what is performing the action. We've got some action names, um, and here's some uh, parameter positions as well. Um, but if we look at, for example, these two, you know, these two look quite similar. At Aberdeen, lay the green package in the van and put the box into the small truck at the top location. So there's, there's a kind of similarity in the behaviour that's getting explained. Um, and so the next step is to kind of establish some kind of similarity between the sentences. Um, and so that, we use a, a kind of measure of similarity. It's based on action names um, and also the roles um, that we've extracted from the sentences. Um, and basically we find the... So for each uh, pair of sentences, find a, um, the most similar roles and then average over them and um, kind of add that to, with the uh, action name as a, as a single measure. And uh, in order to compute symbol accurate, uh, similarity, we um, use synonyms, right? So we're looking at functional similarity. So in natural language, synonymity uh, is exactly that measure, right? Um, and so, for example, lay has a, as a, the top synonym is put, right? Okay, so we've got a, sim a similarity metric and uh, so we can cluster them um, and we use uh, partitioning around medoids and um, and then once we've uh, we've kind of uh, we've uh, explored that for different k's we use select, select scores um, and um, the, the automatic um, result here is just to pick the, the best or the top one so the select score just um, kind of measures how close you are to the other uh, elements in the cluster against how dissimilar you are to the other uh, elements. And um, we then see that we can get kind of nice little uh, packages of each of the sentence groups. Um, so this is one of the, the stages where there is an opportunity for interaction in, in the system. And the important thing is that the user is interacting with their own sentences. So they, they don't need to, to understand any kind of um, representation here. It's simply their own sentences that they are grouping together. So we've got a little sets of, of sentences for each operator. And now the only thing we need to do is come up with an action header for each of those sets. And um, the first thing we do is we pick the representative sentence and we use the, um, the, the middle one, <laughs> the, the, the one that's uh, actually uh, output from the uh, medoid, uh, the, the medoid. Um, and we then make a mapping to each of the other sentences in the operator. Um, and we use a filter. If, if a role exists in 80% of the sentences, whatever, some number, um, we used 80% in the valuation, um, then we keep the roll, otherwise it's print. So that's just, so sometimes you would have a sentence and it had just a little bit extra information, it wasn't, um, so this is to try and kind of um, identify the most um, important roles for a particular action. Um, so this mapping is basically using the similarity metric and, and picking a best mapping between roles in each of the other sentences. Um, and once we've done that, um, if we want to represent one of our sentences, we simply take the action name from the representative um, and fill the, the parameters using the mapping. So for example, at Aberdeen Lay, the green package in the van gets uh, represented as put uh, green package van Aberdeen from the representative rules. 
So just a, a few points on the kind of um, once you uh, once you go put the put it into Lockham. So we've uh, presented that Kep's a kind of um, first step in in looking at um, dealing with missing information. So for example, if some of your sentences missed out, you know, one of the roles, for example. Um, so um, we're able to, you know, fill that in, in certain and also noisy data as well. So if you, if your sentence had the wrong truck, for example. Um, so in terms of the representation you actually get out, um, obviously the clustering has a an impact on generality. So, um, for example, move and drive, um, if they're clustered together, you'll get this more um, concise representation. And in terms of granularity, so we've assumed that the plans that you give in are the kind of plans you want to see coming out again. Um, and I guess it's not related, but it's an interesting point is that we now have a set of sentences that we can present your plans back to you with. So we can take a, we can um, learn a model, we can. Um, generate a plan, and then we can redress the plan in natural language um, using your sentences again. So the evaluation uh, was around some videos um, that we made in, in uh, different ways. Um, so we used uh, Bloxworld as a test domain, um, Towers of Hanoi, Logistics, and a kind of tire world um, example. And we just asked some participants that didn't know anything about PDDL um, to uh, to explain the, the kind of things that were going on. And so one of the, the things that I was interested in exploring here was, you know, what's missing if you just ask people to explain actions? Um, and one of the important things, I guess, and it's not surprising, but the 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 from location, right, if you're moving from somewhere, you know that that's usually missing, and and we tried to train them before, and it's still missing. So, I mean, this is an interesting situation where um, we need to kind of look at how we can infer that, right? Um, for this approach to be, um, you know, more widely um, adoptable, um, and. This this was uh, so referent uh, so so some people for example enumerated the, s the stack when they were um, talking about um, the cards, um, which is interesting and 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 it could be a correct uh, kind of representation in a in a different mapping for example, um, so there the similarity metric worked really well the selection of the right K um, was not so effective, but um, you know typically there was a kind of uh, correct um, partitioning of the behaviours that was defined by the similarity metric, um, and so you know one of our future works is kind of going to be looking at slightly improving that, um, and you know if there is enough information, so if you're giving you know the right arguments, um, so basically if you're sure. Uh, output has the information that uh, the, the PDDL model needs, right? Then um, you get the you get a, you know, a, a working PDDL model out for the, the dynamics of the domain. Um, so we're using Lockham too. So just a, a kind of anecdotal um, uh, example from the um, from the the study. Um, so this is a, an example of some of the sentences that kind of um, were, were made and, and this person used move for all the actions, right? Um, and uh, because of the roles, um, the system was able to kind of separate it into three different behaviours um, automatically, which is, you know, it's quite a nice um, and, and also kind of shows that if we just use verbs, for example, um, it wouldn't have worked. Um, and so you know, there was a kind of, I mean, this is the, the kind of reason why we involved uh, users, right, is so that we got a bit of variation in how they describe things um, and just to kind of see whether um, we could extract the information from the sentences that we needed in order to um, 
kind of uh, create those action headers consistently. Um, and this is a, yeah, an example of the, you know, longer sentences that people were kind of getting into. And um, this is you know, a tire world situation. Open the boot of the red car, take out the jack from the boot of the red. And, and the kind of resulting Lockham structure for the jack with its, um, you know, so the, the, um, the jack, it's the, the, sorry, the car that you put the jack under, and it needs to be the same car that you um, take it from. Okay, so yeah, so 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 at the moment, you know, we can uh, we can generate models um, given kind of kind of consistent sentences. Um, you get you know you get you have this opportunity of rewriting your plans in natural languages. It's nice, um, and uh, yeah, so at any interaction you can use uh, natural language sentences. Um, so we've already kind of uh, talked about um, noisy and missing data. Um, it will be really interesting to kind of look at different granularities and abstractions and models. Um, and I think the most important thing is this, um, you know, what you do and, and can you um, do anything automatically about inferring any information that you would need to make and support creating a like a complete PDDL model or working one. Um, cool, that's me, thanks. So, so, so I mean, th there has been work that has exploited some of the natural language processing, and and, um, and I mean, one of the things that's that's kind of interesting, I think, and different here is that, um, and and complementary, hopefully, um, is the fact that you know by using Lockham and using the stuff that we've already done and, and jumping you know straight across without doing too much on the natural language side. Um, you know, hopefully we're able to exploit some of the assumptions that we, you know, kind of already make, right, to do with um, what a planning model usually looks like. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's possible we could ship those assumptions across to the NLP side, but, um, yeah. I mean, at, at the moment, you typically don't get a, a beautiful PDDL model from from those other approaches, right? Whereas Lockham kind of already provides, if you give it the right information, of course. Questions? Yeah. Uh, so you said that the assumptions you make about the um, ordering of um, things in the text that you get. So do you look for ordering markers in the text or do you just assume that actions are described in the order that they were done? Well so so like the roles are are not really ordered, right, if as long as they're distinct. Um, so in, in the examples we had um, you know at somewhere do something or do something at you know it doesn't it doesn't matter for as long as there's a you know a mapping between roles, um, I mean that allows some kind of flexibility, right? So the, so the thing is, and and you might you know from that right you might think, oh well, can you assume that 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 makes logical sense, right? Or, or you know, um, but the thing is, all all you want to do for Lockham is give it the right objects, and it comes up with the relationships. It comes up with the you know, causal rules, right? All you want to do is give it the information to work from. Okay, that's time.